My name is Cody Askin with Secure Agent Mentor, and I'm going to talk to you today about how I made $117,361.13 by using an eight-step appointment process. We're going to break that down. We're going to talk about how I was able to do it and how you'll be able to do it too using this eight-step appointment process so that you can implement this into your business and your everyday life. Because not only do I want to teach you the steps, but I want it to be something that's practical, tangible, so you can implement it into your business immediately. Because one of the big things that's going to go on in this and why it's going to be so valuable is I was 19. I was in college playing basketball. I was part-time. I had no insurance experience, no sales experience. I didn't know a lot. But what I knew is if I got a good system that I could do it and so could anyone else. So I know I not only want to tell you about my journey today over these next few minutes, but I also want to tell you how you can apply this so that you can have the exact same result that I did. I didn't do anything crazy special. We will not be selling anything today. The purpose is not to sell. The purpose is to bring value to you. So if you stay to the last few minutes, not only am I not going to pitch, I'm not going to sell. I'm not going to ask you to pull out your credit card. Keep it in your wallet, th throw your wallet in the other room. What I am going to do though, in the last few minutes, I'm going to give you a tangible free gift that you can use. So pay attention, take some notes, follow along, stay till the end, and we'll give you a free gift. I want to start off by talking about some of the struggles. This career is not easy. About 92% of insurance agents fail in their first few years. That's crazy. It's sad. It's horrible. What are those things that are holding you back from reaching your true potential? I would say the biggest thing is a lack of consistency. Agents struggle with that. If you're not consistent week in and week out, it's going to be very, very difficult to reach your potential, to hit your goals, whatever that goal is. It's going to be really difficult if you're not consistent because a lot of agents, they, get, they just get complacent. They get comfortable. They have a big week. They have a big day. They have a big month, and then, and then they just relax. Don't relax. You're capable of doing so much more. You've got greatness inside of you, and just because you had a great week to this week, doesn't mean that the other 51 weeks of that year don't need to be great as well because they do. Another thing that a lot of agents tell me about is, hey, I don't get one-on-one -on -one time with a trainer. I don't get trained. I don't get acclimated to what I need to be doing on a daily basis. I, I don't, a lot of them don't know where to start. They don't know what to say. They don't know when to do anything, how to do it. That's one of the things we specialize here is helping insurance agents with all the intangibles, all, all the mindset, all the day-to-day -day things, all the steps that we're going to walk through, actually implementing those into your business and actually putting together a business strategy that you can implement into your business. Because if, if, you don't, if, if you're not trained, if you're not comfortable, and if there's no consistency and it feels like a roller coaster in this business, then you're going to be scared. You're not going to be confident. You're going to hold yourself back. Because if you're scared, you're not confident. You're, you're moving backwards instead of forwards. And I'm telling you what, in this business, you need to be confident because when you're not confident in your process, the client, whether, you're on the, whether they're on the other end of the phone or whether you're sitting down with them, they can feel it. They can tell. So let's get you confident. Let's scale you up. And let's talk about things that you can implement into your business right now because I, I, you, don't, you don't need to be scared to pick up the phone. You don't need to be scared to ask for the business. If you're confident, if you have these tangible things that we're going to walk through this process, if you have processes in place and systems, you won't be scared. You'll be ready for the challenge. Hey, a lot of times we know, a lot of times you know what the real problem is, what's holding you back. A lot of times maybe, maybe you haven't broken down the numbers of what it takes. What do you want to make? What's your goal? What are you looking for? What do you want to happen? If you don't know, it's kind of difficult to get there. What did it take for me to make 117 k in one year at 19 years old with no experience? We're going to walk through those things. You can do it if you have a higher closing percentage. You can do it if you have a better process and a better system. And also, are you willing to bet on yourself? Are you willing to do whatever it takes? Do you believe in yourself? Are you willing to take risks? Because if you believe in yourself, if you're willing to bet on yourself, then you will learn and you will invest and you will grow. But you've got to be willing to take that next step, which I believe you have because you're here. You're listening. You're watching. You're taking notes. You're invested. You're serious. And you want to succeed. I can feel it. All right. You guys have heard some of the things that you want to improve. I've introduced myself as Cody Askins. What makes me a credible source to talk to you? What makes me a credible source to go over things with you, to teach you, to learn from you? So there are a lot of people that you could be listening to, so I'm grateful that you're here listening. 
I now own and run Secure Agent Mentor. We focus on helping insurance agents with training, marketing, lead generation. We focus on helping insurance agents reach their goals. And I'm talking insurance agents in the US, in New Zealand, in Canada, literally all over the world. Because at the end of the day, if we're not helping people, what are we truly doing? Right now, I wanna to prove to you that I'm someone that's credible that you can listen to, which is why you're seeing the $117,000 pay stub on the screen right now, back when I was 19. This is what was possible for me because of the steps that we're gonna go over next and also what's possible for you. Because now, that was then. What do I do now? Now I help thousands of agents every single day reach their goals to make millions of dollars and have more success than they've ever had. So I'm gonna give you some one-on-one -on -one time with me. So we can focus on increasing your revenue, your profitability, seeing more people, increasing your closing percentage, and implementing some processes that can change your life. All right, now to the good stuff, the meat of what we're talking about, the eight-step appointment process, why you're here today to learn the thing that is going to help you in your business. I'm gonna walk through every step, but bear with me, because every step is going to get that much better. Step number one of the eight-step appointment process is the introduction. I'm talking about the moment you pull up in their, the moment you're pulling down their driveway, how are you dressed? How do you look? I, I don't want my dress code and how I look to affect my ability to make a sale. So yeah, I don't wear shorts, you know, a, a t-shirt and jeans and, a, and, a, and tennis shoes. I don't, wanna be, I, I don't wanna be that guy, right? So you can do whatever you want, but you may wanna listen to what I gotta say. Also, not only dress code, but, but when I'm getting out of the car, I'm always thinking about how they're receiving me from inside the home. When they're looking through the window, I wanna wave at the window, smile. If there's a chance of them seeing me, I feel like that starts the relationship process. If they see me, they can't hide, they're gonna to come to the door, or they thought that they saw me, they think that I saw them, whatever the case is. So literally, I'm walking up to the door, I'm smiling, I'm waving, I'm excited. Hey, Miss Betty, my, name, my name's Cody, how are you? Like, they normally remember it's an appointment and why I'm there. Hey, I'll start wiping off my feet. You know, do you, do you want me to, you may take off my shoes if it's a nice home or whether it's a nice home or not. It makes them feel like you're a respectful individual. Let them know that you're there to help them. Feel, be genuine. Those first 60 seconds, couple minutes are super important because they're going to get a first impression of you. How do you want to leave that first impression? These may seem silly. These may seem obvious. These may seem small, tedious steps, but I want you to be, I want you to use these to be consistent in your business. And so this is a big way to start off an appointment. Have a good introduction. It'll lead you solidly into the warm-up because when you get into the warm-up, the warm-up is the time to where you gel with them. You build the relationship. I always like to start off the warm-up by complimenting and thanking them. Miss Betty, thank you so much for allowing me in your home. You've got a beautiful home. I'm super excited to be here, so thank you so much for allowing me in your home. I know that I, I, I know this is your space, and I'm grateful that I'm here. So thank you for trusting me enough to have me in your home. I think, I think that's a great way to start up a warm up. I think it's a great way to let them know, hey, that person's respectful, they're transparent, they're a down to earth good person, someone I can trust. But I, when I get into warm up, I wanna ask some questions. Hey, how long have you lived? I don't wanna just jump into, hey, I'm here to sell you insurance. How, how long have you lived here? Where are you originally from? Uh, I'm gonna look at pictures on the wall, ask about grandkids. But also you can get into the, to a, I've, I've got a little trick that I like to call F-O-R-D. Ford. I, I like to use this Ford method. If you don't know what to ask next and you're struggling in the warm up, you're not sure what to say, use the Ford method. F for family, O for occupation, R for recreation, and D for desires. People love to talk about their family. If they enjoyed their career and their job, they probably want to talk about it. If there's something they'd like to do for fun, get to know them. Maybe they love to play golf and maybe you can take them golfing. Maybe their desires are to leave a bunch of money to their kids. Maybe their desires are to leave a legacy and to not be a burden on their family. You don't know until you ask. So use this time to get to know them. Take at least a few minutes. If they try to rush you and they want to get down to it, that's fine. But don't go straight into giving them quotes. At this point, get to know them and build a solid foundation, which is why the warm-up is so important. Because once you get through the warm-up, step three is fact find. Then you gotta get into the fact-finding portion where you're getting to know them. You're getting, the, you're, you're getting to know their, their health, the, what they want, why you're here. So the first question I love to ask when I, to transition from warm-up to fact-find is, Miss Betty, what got you thinking about all this? Why am I here? 
I, I want to get them talking. I learned a long time ago, if I can get them talking and I can, and, and I can listen more than I talk, if a client talks more than we do, than, I, than we do, than I do, than you do, you get a better chance of actually making that sell and solidifying the relationship with them. It's so important. If you can get them talking, they're going to tell you what you need to know, but you got to ask the right questions. So what got you thinking about this? What's the purpose of this? Why am I here? What got you thinking about all this? When you thought about this, what did you have in mind? What were you thinking would happen? When you, when you started th thinking about planning, you know, were, were you wanting to cover burial, final expenses, a mortgage, debt, leave money to your family, like credit, you know, covering credit cards, car loans, whatever. Like, what was the purpose of this? What, what were those things that burden you or concern you that you want to make sure that we cover today? Be because everybody's got those things that they're concerned about, that they want to have answered, they want to have covered. So make sure that you ask the right questions because at, the, at, at this point, I'll, in the, early in the fact finding, I want to know what do they want to accomplish? Who do, they, who do they want their beneficiary to be? Who are they doing this for? And I want a name and a relationship. Why are they wanting to do this? The, the, those pain points that you can use when you're with the client, those things that you can use to close them later in the conversation. You need to know those things. It don't have to be super complicated, but you need to know those things before you move into health. Because during fact finding, you need to know what they need and want, but you also need to know how their health is. I mean, if you can get into some questions and things to where you can learn like, you know, okay, they make a little money or they don't make any money to help you when you're giving them options later. I don't want to specifically say, hey, what can you afford or how much can you afford? Only because when I do that, I may get them thinking small because most people are going to say, ah, 20, 30, 40 bucks, whatever. Let's focus on the value. Let's focus on the relationship. Let's focus on the needs and the wants more than trying to sell them on price because I don't want to sell on price. I want to sell on me. I want to sell on them. I want to sell on what they need, what they want, what this is going to accomplish for them. I want to, I, 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 I want to sell on all these additional things and different things other than just price. And I think that's super important. And so I'll ask them about health, you know, height and weight. Have you, ever, have you ever had cancer, heart attack, stroke, diabetes, COPD? How young are you? How old are you? Do you smoke? Do you chew? Is there anything else health-wise going on? Have you had any surgeries ever? Ask lots of questions here about their health, about their medications, because you need to know these things so that you can build a solid presentation, which is why the fact-finding portion is arguably the most important part of the eight-step appointment process, especially these next three sections where you're doing your fact-finding, your presenting, and your closing. Super, super, super imperative. If you don't ask the right questions or you don't get enough information in the fact-finding portion, it'll hinder you in this next portion, which is the presentation. I always tell people, I always tell people a couple things. Time kills all deals, but also, I want to lose a cell on my own terms. If I lose a cell later because I was too afraid to ask a question earlier in the presentation, then it's my fault. So ask those questions. Ask the tough questions. Ask the easy questions. Ask those pain point questions. Get them to talk. You want them to talk a lot more than you do in the fact-finding portion because when you get in the presentation portion, you're going to have to talk a little bit. So moving on to presentation, I'm someone that I want to find the best three quotes for them and I want to write them down and I want to put them on, I'm going to, I'm, I want to put them on paper. I want to run them real quick because I already know kind of what I'm going to position for them and with them. And so I want to know that information. I want to put it on a piece of paper, and then I want to go into showing my five benefits. My five benefits presentation is super, super, super important, which is kind of a combination of the presentation and the close. Because if I'm presenting those five options and those five benefits, it'll be easy to close because this is a chance to build value in you, the company you represent, what you're looking to accomplish, all these things. A lot of people have questions about, hey, what happens with the price? What happens with the benefit? What happens with... You're going to go over that right now, which is why I want to find three good options. And I want to, I, I want to literally go over these things, a part of the presentation, and then move into the close. And so literally my... And I, I'm going to do it with you right now. I'm going, I'm, I'm going to do it with you right now, live, on camera, because I think it's important. I think, I think the, the presentation part is super, super, super important because this, a lot of times, is what helps me get them to make a decision. Cryo closes, questions, getting them engaged. I'll, I'll even go kneel by them. I'll even go sit by them on the couch. I want to be in their bubble and in their space at this moment, right now. So I'll literally say, okay, Miss Betty, 
I've got, there's some benefits that my clients love and they rave about. Is it okay if I share you those with you real quick? Who's going to say no to that? So I'm going to say, all right, Betty, we're going to go over. I'm going to try to have my best handwriting effort here. We're going to go over some benefits of the types of policies that we sell. I'm going to say, Betty, the first benefit, I'm going to say, Betty, are you excited about this? Are you ready, Betty? Because he's going to be good, Betty. All right, Betty, the, the first benefit. And why do I use Betty? Everybody's got, everybody's got a, you know, a name or a previous client or just something they use. First, first benefit, Betty, is that this comes with a coverage lock. You can say coverage lock or whole life. If you're selling whole life, then say, say whole life. If you're selling term, use a coverage lock. Because what that's going to do is, Betty, this is a whole life. If it's a whole life, you want to say whole life. Betty, this is a whole life. Which means, what does that mean, Betty? It'll last your entire life. It'll never change. It's not something that's going to, you know, there's a, tell her, Betty, there's a lot of things out in the world that will change every year, every five years, or end at 70, or end at 80. You don't want that. You want something that is permanent, that's, that, 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 that lasts your entire life. Do you like that, Betty? Is, is, is the whole life portion important to you? Yeah, it's important. I like that. that. That's a trial close. That's a way to get them engaged. All right, step number two, moving along, is the price lock. All right, Betty, the price lock's important. The price lock makes sure that the price never goes up ever because that, that's what a lock means. Is that important to you, knowing that the price won't change at 70 or 80 or every year? Do you like that? That's another example of a trial close. Each one, I want to get their feedback every single time on each thing. Also, Betty, this policy pays double in the event of an accident. And if it doesn't, then just include a accidental death benefit rider or place, replace this one with something else. Betty, this one paid double in the event of an accident. So in the event that, hey, you pass away and you have a $20,000 policy, it pays $40,000. That, that, that's not bad, is it? Is that important to you? Do you like that? If they like it, great, include it. If they don't, okay. But get, a, get, get engagement and feedback along the way. The fourth benefit, Betty, is that this builds some cash. It builds some cash value within the policy, kind of like a savings account, so that in the event you ever needed to take money out of your policy as kind of like a loan in the future, you could. Now, Betty, we don't recommend it, but it's nice to know that the policy comes with it. Am I right? Do you like that? Is that important to you? And then the fifth benefit is probably the one I spend the most time on generally because, Betty, this comes with a local agent, and a local agent is super imperative because you can buy a policy through the mail, through the TV, over the phone, wherever. People out of the country, you can do whatever you want or off TV commercials. But to know that you're dealing with someone local because when you have minor changes, you want to change your address, your beneficiary, your bank account, whatever you want to change in that moment, it's better to know that you can pick up a local cell phone number and that someone like me can instantly change it and fix it for you rather than calling and waiting on hold for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, two hours. It's, it's just easier to deal with a local person, am I right? But I'm gonna tell Betty, even more important than minor changes, when that time comes where you're no longer with us, I want your family to be able to call me. I, I, I don't wanna put that burden on your daughter or your son or your spouse, whoever their beneficiary is, pinpoint that out right now and say, rather than putting that burden on them and them having to mail off claim paperwork, get stuff notarized, mail off death certificates, spend 30, 60, 90 days putting all this together, they're already trying to, they're already trying to grieve or celebrate your life however they choose to do that. Let's not add another burden of them having to do, go through all this rigmarole of waiting on hold and talking to companies and getting stuff notarized and handling the funeral home. I'm a local person that has experience with helping families with this. Wouldn't it be nice to know that that burden could be lifted? Just like you could call a local cell phone number with minor changes, they can too. They can call a local cell phone number. It's immediately handled. I'll take care of it all for them. Now, Betty, is the local agent important or is that important? Of these five, which one do you like the best? Miss Betty, of these five benefits, which one is your favorite? Because the, even though my clients like them all, they still have favorites that they prefer. Which one do you prefer? And I get them to choose every step of the way. It's a trial close. It's a way to get them to pick and make a decision. All right. So then I immediately, you know, those three quotes that we had just re previously wrote down. I want to go back to those right now and say, Betty, I'm going to give you three options right now that comes with all five of these benefits. You're going to love them. And you're going to like that it comes with all five of these, especially that price lock and the local agent that you indicated that you love. Now, Betty, I'm going to show you those three options. 
and you would have written them down, you know, like in this case, they would have been written down before, but maybe, maybe it was maybe it was twenty thousand, maybe it was fifteen thousand, and maybe it was ten thousand, because you, you want to list the benefit first because that's the more there's there's more value in the benefit than there is in the price, and then maybe the maybe the price you know the the price was one hundred seventy five and fifty. You should know the client well enough to know what they're looking to accomplish. So these three options should fit what they're wanting to do. And so I'm going to, it's already going to be written down. I'm going to flip it over and say, okay, Betty, we have the benefits. Now I'm going to show you the three options that align with these benefits, everything you want. I'm going to show you these and I need, I need you to pick one and tell me which one you prefer and that you're most comfortable with, the one you like. So I'm going to show them, okay, best Betty, which one of those do you like the most? Which one are you most comfortable with? And then I'm going to shut up and I'm going to let them pick. I'm going to let them choose. If I've done a good job from a relationship standpoint, if I've done a good job from a benefits standpoint, if I've done a good job at building value, 95% of the time, they will make a decision and choose an option. And then once they choose, you close the business. Pull out an application, have it ready, have it close. Don't, don't, don't be funneling through your bag for six minutes because time kills all deals, right? They may put it off. They may say, hey, I'm really busy. Can you finish this tomorrow? Pull it out and jump into it and say, you know what? Let's see if we can get you approved. What's your full legal name? And then immediately jump into the application. Now, they can give you objections. They can, they, they, they can say, hey, you know what? I want to think about it. Something I use to close several massive deals, I'm talking $300 a month, $500 a month, $1,000 a month, is when they say, hey, I was with a veteran agent one time, and the veteran agent was sitting on the couch with the client and with me, and it was a, it was a, it was a $300 a month deal. That's a good sell. And the client said, hey, Cody, I want to think about it. Miss Betty, I respect that. I totally get it. Always agree. I respect that I get it completely. Unfortunately, we don't do callbacks. I have a personal rule and an office rule that we don't do callbacks because a lot of times people say they're going to think about it. They never really think about it. They pass away later and their family blames us. I'm going to take all of that off the table. You have everything that you need to make an informed decision today. You need it. You want it. You can afford it. And it makes sense because we're giving you what you want for the price you want and you're getting me and we're, we get along super well. Am I right? So Betty, why don't you just take it? And they do. The client looked at me and said, you know what? If I can't think about it, uh, you know, you're saving me money and giving me more coverage and giving me cash back, I guess I have to take it, right? And that's a lot of times what they do. But a lot of times agents are scared to, and, and they'll just listen. They'll, they'll, they'll give up too easy. They'll hear one objection and they'll run in the corner and, 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 and pout and cry and curl up in a ball. Don't give up. Just because they're giving you some objection, they may, be, they may just be testing you. I give salespeople objections just for the fun of it, <laughs> right? So but when they give you an objection, overcome it. When they say, you know what, we've got to shop with s some other agents. Fantastic. They won't beat me. But the more important than them beating me on price, which will never happen, Betty, is we've spent a good 45 minutes, an hour today together. Do you really want to spend another hour with somebody else? Because if I guarantee that I have the best price and we get along, because we get along, don't we, Betty? We get along really well. You're like family now. I recommend keeping it simple and moving forward with me. Let's go ahead and do this. Sound good to you? You can use these things live in an appointment to overcome objections and then move into the application process. No matter what they say, you can overcome it. Don't give up, but be agreeable. Don't, be, don't, be, don't get defensive. Don't, don't be offended. Don't get negative on me. When they say, hey, I want to think about it. No, Betty. No, 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 no. Don't say no. Don't be disagreeable and don't be negative. Be agreeable. And then move into the application process. All right, Betty, let's see if we can get you approved. What's your full legal name? And then I'll just move straight through it. Some, some agents ask for the driver's license. Some agents confirm the beneficiary. However you want to do it, do it. And then move into the application process. Gather all the information. Get them approved. Don't leave anything out. Double check everything. You don't want to come back later for a signature because you forgot. Think about everything properly. And then once you've got the application closed, you've got all the information. That, that, that was step six. We went through presentation four, close five, and application process, step number six. That's on you. The application process varies by everyone. But keep it simple and ask. When you get to the social, 
It's like every other question. Don't be like, oh, Miss Betty, I'm sorry I have to ask you this. I hate to do it, but what's your social? Perfect. Thanks, Miss Betty. What's your, and, and what's your social? It's like every other question. It ain't, it, ain't, it ain't abnormal. Keep it simple. And then, after the application, move into wrap up. Some agents will get the sale and high tell and run. Don't be that dude. That, that's not you. You're the guy that's going to spend time with them. You're the genuine, transparent guy that wants to build a solid relationship so they're your client for life. So in, in step number seven, the wrap up, spend time with them. Miss Betty, we've had fun together, am I right? I'm assuming that you're happy with your decision today. Now, is there anything at all, is there any reason why you wouldn't keep this for the rest of your life? Is there anything I'm missing? Because I feel like this is perfect. If, if, if they're gonna change their mind, if, if they're gonna be hesitations of doubt, I'd rather know right now than later. And I'm, I'm, gonna, and I'm gonna tell you why, because I believe in getting answers to those questions, making sure they solve value, that they like it. And then I believe in confirming questions. I believe in getting a referral. And then I believe in coming down off of business into the cool down next. And so, but before you get there, ask for referral. Most people, most, most agents don't ask for a referral because they don't know how to ask. Rather than saying, hey, who's 10 people that you know? Or who's, who's 782 people that you know and love that wants to help, that want, also needs help? Keep it simple. If the objective and the goal is to get a referral, then ask for one name. Because wouldn't you rather get one name every single time than ask for 10 and never get anything? So, I'm the guy that plays the numbers. Miss Betty, I'm gonna ask you a question because you saw value from this, you told me you had. I'm gonna ask you a question. When I ask you this, someone's gonna pop in your head. When they do, I need you to tell me who pops in your head. Who else do you know that could also use help with this right now? Miss Betty, someone popped in your head. Who was it? Who popped in your head right now? Someone popped in my head. Someone popped in the camera guy's head. DJ, someone popped in your head, right? Somebody popped in your head. And they say, you know what? I don't know. Well, if you had to guess, ask one more time. If you had to guess, who would you say? One person. I need one name that can also use help with this. You know somebody that can, you love somebody, you care about somebody, you want somebody to succeed, you want somebody not to leave a burden on your family and their family, like you aren't today. Who's that one person? You had to name one person. Who is it, Betty? Keep asking. Everybody's gonna say, I don't know. Everybody's gonna be unsure. Ask the question again. And then explain the process and what's gonna happen. So literally move into, okay, now, Miss Betty, I'm gonna take the application, I'm gonna take it back, I'm gonna fax, send it off to the insurance company. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna Either they're already approved with a phone interview or they're going to approve you at that point, whatever the application process warrants, and let them know, hey, you're going to get a policy literally in the next 7 to 14 days in your hands, a physical policy with all your information. I'm going to leave them my business card. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to leave them the details about the policy. I'm going to leave them the benefits so that I can remind them later if, if another agent pulls up, another agent asks them, another agent calls them, hey, that's too cheap. It doesn't come with a price lock. They can see that it does. I'm going to leave my card. I'm going to leave the what they chose, the rates that they chose. And then I'm going to ask, do you have any questions? Are there any questions on your mind that you haven't asked today? It's really rare that they ask one because normally they've, we've covered it all. But hey, do you have any questions? Don't let there be questions when you leave. Make sure that you answer questions while you're there because that's one of the biggest reasons for cool down. Step number eight is I don't want me to leave and run out and then be talking about business when I leave. I wanna talk about business right now. I want them, to, I, I wanna get off of business and cool down so when I leave, they're not talking about business. When I leave, they're just, it's over, it's done, it's wrapped up. I, wanna, I also wanna know, hey, what do you like to do for fun? Do you have any big plans the rest of the week? Kind of, the, it's the warm up in reverse at the end before you leave as you're walking out. You know, hey, can I use your restroom real quick? You know, uh, I've, I've gotta to go to Buffalo. Can you give me directions to Buffalo? Like. Think through that. Think about if you were them, would you want someone just selling you something and running out? Or would you want them focused on helping you, spending a little more time with you, solidifying that relationship? Don't be that sales guy. Be the guy that builds a relationship, is genuine, and that actually cares. So that's the eight-step appointment process. What do you think? How awesome is that? That's something you can implement in your business today to start making a ton of money. All right, you've learned an eight-step process of what to implement when you see someone. Now, how do you get in front of someone? How many leads? What does it take to make 117K? What's it take to make 100K? How many leads do you need to get in front of people? How much money do you wanna make? I am a believer that I, I wanna show everyone how to make 100 grand per year. And the way I do it is our average premium is about 
$720 per year, about 60 bucks a month. 60, 61 bucks a month of what we've seen on average from our agency. And so with that, that's about three sales per week is about $2,100, $2,200, a little over 2K. You do that 50 weeks of the year, you take two weeks off, that's 100 grand. Two grand times 50 weeks, no matter what calculator you use, equals 100 grand. Now, how do you end up with three sales per week? I know that agents, they need to set 15 appointments, they need to see 10, and if they sit down with 10, you'll always sell way more than three policies every single week. If not, you're, major, you're definitely doing something majorly wrong. So if you think through this, how, how, how do you set 15? That's, that, that's the science. That's what I did at 19, made 117K. I set 15. I sat with 10. When I sat with 10 and asked 10 people to buy every single week on a consistent basis, I blew up. And I want you to as well. So when you're thinking through how do you set 15 and C10? You need 25 to 30 solid leads per week. Some agents need less leads, some agents need more leads. I would say about 25 to 30 leads a week is that perfect storm and system. No matter the area, no matter the product, no matter where you're at, whatever. If you have, say, say, you, had, say you had 25 leads a week, you're gonna end up with north of a 50% set ratio. You're gonna end up sitting with about 40%, about 10, 10 people, which isn't bad at all, that's good. And you're going to end up seeing, you'll probably end up selling, say you sell half, but say four of the five were singles and one of them was a couple. Then you ended up with six policies. You actually ended up making four grand or more from the exact same 10 sits that we're talking about. But every agent is different. Whether you made two or four, it's something you got to do every single week. You're not going to put up a big number for the whole year unless you break it down, you know your numbers, and you're consistent about it week in and week out. I don't want to be a roller coaster. I want to be consistent. How many appointments does it take for you to make a sale? Know your percentages. I just did a coaching session with an agent literally a couple days ago, and the guy said, hey, these are my percentages. These are my percentages of leads to appointment set, of my, my, my percentage of set to sit, my percentage of sit to close and, and in writing business. And so we knew once you know all your numbers and percentages, it's all about, then it's all about just buying so many leads per week. And when you do that, then you immediately start to hit the numbers that you want to make. It's so much easier and you'll feel so much better if you're consistent about it. Because once you know the number of sales, the average premium, all those things, then you also can make 100K in a single year. All right, now's the time in your business where you can take your business to the next level. I promised I wouldn't sell you something, but I am gonna give you something for free. We talked about this. What I wanna do is I want you to sign up for a free strategy session with one of our senior business consultants. They're gonna walk you through your strengths. What are you great at? Let's, let's keep doing that. What are you weak at? Let's improve those things. And where do the opportunities lie in your business? And also, what are the threats? What are the, th what are the things mentally? What are the things physically that are holding you back from making 100 grand every single year? Because at the end of the strategy session, so go ahead and sign up because at the end of the strategy session with our senior business consultants, they're gonna give you a free appointment setting script and they're also gonna give you my eight step appointment process thoroughly dove and deep dive on paper also for free. What is a strategy session and why is it important? A strategy session is a time for you to get together and, 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 and to learn and to tweak and to strategize and to implement things in your business maybe you didn't think about. Because when you start talking to a senior business consultant, you start, you start talking to my team about, they know how I made 100K. They've helped thousands of other agents make 100K. If that's holding you back, we guarantee that we can help you. And that's why a strategy session is super important because we're gonna dive in to the numbers that you wanna hit. But while, you, while you're waiting for the strategy session, because I'm sure you signed up, while you're waiting for the strategy session with our team, whenever that strategy session takes place, whenever you book it for, they will, I, I, I want you, I've got a little homework though, because they're gonna be prepared and ready, but I need you to know your numbers. What do you wanna be? Do you wanna make 100K? Do you wanna make a half a million dollars? Do you wanna make a million dollars? What are the numbers that you wanna hit? Have a goal, and then our team is gonna help you implement that. So go ahead and do this. Click the link below right now. It's gonna take you to a scheduler. I need you to book this strategy session Compliments of me for free right now because I want you to, I want to take your business to the next level. I want to blow up your business. Ah, I want to be shaking hands in line at the bank and I want to meet you in the near future. So do this. Click the link. Sign up for the free strategy session because it's going to take your business to the next level. You'll never be afraid to pick up the phone again. 
The script is ridiculous. The ACM appointment process will ensure that you close every deal. It's so deep. It's so precious. This is something I've, I've been cultivating and collecting and building for the last, literally the last nine years of my life has been obsessed with perfecting this right now. So take some action. I know you're, you're at a point in your career where you're like, you know what? Should I or should I not? Dude, if you want to change your life wherever you want to legal, leave a legacy, you want to protect your family, you want to help a lot of people and you want to make some money in the meantime doing it, then you'll click the link below. You'll schedule the strategy session. It's free. You might as well do it. Am I right? If you learn, if you learn one thing, it's worth it. With our senior business consultants, they're going to help you. And then we're going to give you a couple free gifts at the end of the strategy session just for being on this webinar. Thank you so much for being a part of this. I'm super grateful that you took time out of your day to spend it with me and spend it with our team. We're here to help. Again, my name is Cody Askins with Secure Agent Mentor. I am here to help you forever. Make sure you take advantage of this free, free strategy session, free gifts. I hope to see you again soon. I hope we can talk soon because, again, I'm here to help you blow up your brand. Hey, so if you love this video, I've got eight rules for calling insurance leads. It's right there. Go there, click on the video, and I'll see you there. So these eight rules will make sure that you're able to stay in control, and it'll help you set more appointments when you call leads. All right, so let's jump right in. The first one is you need to assume that...